G'day guys, welcome back to another episode. For this one, I'm back in the boat with Brad Bye, uh, the Snapper Maestro, and we are using plastics only uh, in search of a big snapper. Uh, Brad gives us some really, really helpful tips on how to fish uh, plastics for snapper, so stick around and watch all that through, and then make sure you hang around for the end because we get an absolute awesome fish. Enjoy this one, see you next episode. Bye for now. All right, so talk to me about plastics. <laughs> Let me tap into the vault of knowledge on plastics fishing. So today, guys, as I mentioned before, in the introduction there, we're just using plastics, solely plastics. In the last episode, we did a bit of a combination. We sort of fished uh, baits by float lining in the morning, and then we went out and we had more success on the bigger fish on the plastic. So today, we just come out for a plastic session. Brad's already bagged a couple of good-sized eating fish. Uh, and what we're doing here is just drifting, so you never anchor when you're plasticking, no electric, no robot anchor, old school style, always drifting, yeah? Always drifting, mate. If yep. anything, I'll probably throw out a sea anchor if it's a little bit breezy. Just slow it up, yeah. Or you guys who are fortunate enough to have an electric, you can slow yourself up with that, obviously, but always yeah, on the drift drop. I stole this off someone else's boat, that one, but... Uh, <laughs> hey, mate, any, any kind of depths that are your preferred depths for plastic fishing? I know we're, in the moment we're in about 20 metres and we started in a bit shallower. Yeah. Any depth plastics will work? Depends on, I guess, time of the day, really. Yep. Early in the morning, I want to get up in me shallows. Yep. And especially on the edges of those shallows. Yep. Where bait's going to be congregating and, a, and an easy exit for a snapper to rip up, knock a bit of bait off in the shallows. Right. Get back down into the depth. So it's just a little bit on tackle before we get the technique, because I know you've got a bit of a different technique here that I haven't seen much before with the sort of leaving the line go slack and what have you. But um, jig head size, that's obviously that's going to be determined by current and drift yeah. rate and all that type of thing. But if you've got, say, a normal medium sort of current, what have you, what's your preference in terms uh, of jig size? I know I use sort of one eighth, one six, but I fish a lot three, shallower than you. Three eighths, your medium yep. go to, I guess. Yep. Up in your shallows, you're going to go back to a quarter ounce. And the assessment there to determine what size jig head you're going to use really is you want to get, I know you mentioned it the other day when we were out, you want to get that plastic sort of swimming down the bottom, yeah? That yep. tail action going. Yep. Not a not like dropping like a lead balloon straight to the bottom, eh? No, exactly. Right yeah. Just nice and just fluttering down, taking its time to get down there. So there was a principle to be sort of the lighter the better yep. according to your conditions, yeah? Yep. And then, for you, from your point of view, strike zone is anywhere from really top water down to bottom, because snapper can turn up really anywhere, yeah? Just as we saw then, one followed you up and yeah. hit you halfway up, right up. Um, bigger fish, mate, I always find that bigger fish. Oh, can be right up on the surf, right, right, right up on the surface. Yep, yep. yep. And um, anyone who's watched uh, this channel will know the answer to this question, but your favourite plastic? <laughs> I know I call it the Brad Vi, but you, you, you like that seven inch jerk shad shape. I know you like white, but is there any others that you like to use or colours or anything like that? I love a, um, a pilchard. Yep. Pilchard's a good colour. I love the coral trout. Yep. Um, and you. Clearer days, I'll go for something like a chartreuse if I can find anything, like the tiger yep. one you had on. Yep. Fire tiger. Fire tiger. And uh, you, uh, you seem to have a preference for the Z Man just for mainly the durability there. Yeah. yeah. And, and the suppleness of that plastic. Yeah. You know, I think uh, 
Berkeley, they they killed the um, the gulps. pearl white. Yep. If you if remember, the old pearl whites used to be a little bit duller in colour. Right now, they're they're really really white. Like that. Yeah. So this one's all you used to be really yeah. white. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's exactly. a pearl white. They call it, but it has changed, hasn't it? It has changed, but what's changed in that is the suppleness of the of the plastic in there. Yes. Um, they don't feel too bad, them ones, but they, yeah. can, get, they can get a bit stiff in the pack while. at the old Berkeley's. Um, and talk to me about scents. Do you use scent or you just use the ones in the package? Kind of thing? I, I thought you had a sneaky chew or something. Yeah. In there, uh, <laughs> I did. And you'll do that religiously or just every now and then you put one on? No. I'll uh, probably do it on a plastic I've had on a rod sitting in the back of the boat. Yep. Um, so just, just to tidy it back up a bit. So that's a 3 8 head with the... The Brad by special on there is E-Man in white. All right. uh, and lastly, technique, mate. I know that I've been watching you. Right. Uh, yeah, not in a creepy kind of way, but <laughs> <laughs> every time you've been over to work the anchor, no. Uh, so you're casting ahead of the drift. Yep. Uh, so obviously, that's allowing it to sink. Yep. But I know that one thing you're, you're doing a bit different is you quite often fish in with the bail arm open. Or I will. Yep. Uh, when it's really quiet at the moment, like when it's there's no current. But you're leaving slack line on the surface there, which yeah. you can actually see now with the sun on it. Yeah. And you're looking for so that's that I'll, line to spring tight. That's basically how I'll fish, Rob. Yep. I want that line slack at the end of me uh, rod. Yep. And I'm watching what's going on at the end of that line. Yep. As soon so, as that goes to straighten up, spring tight. You. That's when you. I know them. something's up. Got it. Then react straight away to that, and usually find you get a good hook up. Now, see how that line just came up tight again? Yep. I'm going to let that bail arm open again. Yep. I really want that slack line so that the plastic's doing its natural thing. It's falling down head first. Yep. Uh, to the bottom. So I'm kind of a lazy man, so I quite do, I quite often do the rod holder thing. But you're actively working the rod. Yeah. Uh, and at times you're sort of just still giving the, the plastic a bit of a flick and yep. a bit of a dance around rotter. Yep. And once that drop's done, mate, I'm pretty happy I'm out of there. All right, so yeah, once it closes the bottom, yep. you're done. And uh, over a given mark, you'll drift it, what, two or three times and then move on? Yeah, yeah give, it a, give it three good drifts. Yep. Get your drift nice and, you know, adjust it to what you've missed last time you might just miss it by a little bit so you yeah or if you drop a couple of fish you might think oh it's worth going back over that again right uh, now you i know you mentioned before if you fish them a given bit of reef you like working the edges of it more so than right up on the peak yeah or were you just sort yeah. of drift at the edges okay early in the morning my first trip might be up over those shallows first thing yeah surprise maybe a big red yeah amongst the bait yeah um, as the sun slowly comes up over that horizon, I'll be getting out of there. I'll be just fishing right on that edge, yep. right where the your screen's just dead flat. Yep. And that first rock just starts to come first up. First rock. Yep. Right. There. Um, right in that crutch down in there. Yep. If you're if you're deep enough. Yep. At the time, I recommend staying down there. Right. There. Um, no, you. Yeah, well, you always sort of hook fish up on the edges as well, but. Yeah. I really find that some of my best successes come from you look around at the sound and you think, oh, it's not much happening here, and then you just see the the first rise in the yep in the rock. That's where you find snapper holding up, yeah, yeah right there. I mean, they really are fish that can kind of turn up literally anywhere, yeah. but there are, I guess, consistent places where they're going to be found more often than not. Eh? You got fish on there? Yeah, it's a little noobly, mate. So after all that expert advice, <laughs> all that experience, when you put it all together, this is what you come up with. <laughs> <laughs>Snapper extravaganza expose. Uh, you've just dialed in at a perfect time. Brad has just hooked a really good fish. Uh, last episode, we were sort of concentrating on bait initially, and we got a couple of fish on plastics, which are bigger fish. But this, this episode, we're just using plastic solely.
And the Sapper Maestro is at it again. I think he's got me up 3-0 three, three or something. Similar, but we won't talk about that. I'll shut up while I see you. some on those fish. Should we go on, mate? Good fish, Rob. Try and stay connected to this one. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm not going to say anything at all. <laughs> something that, I will say one thing, though. I forgot Don't have a net. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a bit of swearing. <laughs> it might be. Um, so you're right, have faith. Me. Have faith, mate. I'm have to unzip that esky. <laughs> I'll get him in the gills. He's a good fish, yeah. That was a good one. I'm going to annoy you here, but oh, that's a good fish. Yep, ugly. Oh, ripper. <laughs> nice with you, mate. <laughs> all right. And there you have it, guys. We managed to do it, or Brad managed to do it. Uh, even without a net, we got it. And that is the result of some good plastic fishing. Mate, that is a absolute cracker of a fish. There you go. That is a ripper. Is that a big dragon that is? Uh, he's about six or seven kilo, I guess. We'll put him on the brag mat, a bit of fair idea. Excellent fish. And that's fallen, obviously, for the bread boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate. Perfect. Finally. Finally. Happy, mate? Very happy. Legend. <laughs> and this, people, is what happens when you fish with legends. <laughs> Excellent. That just goes to show that the technique that Brad was talking about earlier with his plastics, because I've got bugger all, I've had two rods out, he's had one, uh, certainly works.